Welcome to lecture number 13 for ECE 320, Electronics 1, H-Bridges. Now here's a challenge for you. In our last lecture, we had a transistor being used as a switch. With that, I can turn a motor on and off. How do I make the motor go backwards? For example, right here, I've got a single 5-volt power supply. That 5-volt power supply is making the motor spin both backwards and forwards. And you can see that on the voltmeter. I'm applying plus 3 volts, 0 volts, minus 3 volts. How do I get plus minus 3 volts out of a single battery? Well, the answer is an H-bridge. That's today's lecture. So starting out, let's refer back to uh, the previous lecture on transistors being used as a switch. With the transistor, I can create an electronic switch. With that, I can turn on and off a motor. If I want to connect on the high side, I use a PNP transistor. Connect on the low side, use an NPN. In both cases, I have the motor just spinning in one direction. Current always flows straight down. And the voltage you get across the motor is 10 minus the voltage collector to emitter, about 9.8 volts. So that's what we did before. What I want to do is make the motor spin both forward and backwards. To do that, I use an H-bridge. An H-bridge is four transistor switches. Two connected on the high side, those will be your PNPs. Two connected on the low side, those are your NPNs. If I turn on switch one and four, current flows to the right. Call that forward. If I close switches three and two, current goes backwards. Call that reverse. And if I open up all switches, the motor stops. That's kind of the idea of using four transistors in a configuration called an H-bridge, because that kind of looks like the letter H, to make the motor go forward and backwards. So that's the idea. The actual circuit looks like this. And here you can kind of see the letter H. I use on the high side P and P transistors. I use on the low side NPN transistors. And with that, I have four modes of operation. I can go forward. I can turn on T1, T4, and current flows to the right. I can turn on transistors 3 and 2, in which case current flows this way. I can turn everybody off, in which case there is no current, no power to the motor. There's a fourth mode. If I turn on T2 and T4, that's active braking. I've shorted out the motor. What happens is I'm converting the kinetic energy of the motor into electrical energy. Motors and generators are the same thing. It, the motor will operate as a generator, converting its kinetic energy into electrical en energy. The current then gets burnt up as I squared R, burnt up in the resistance, the armature. That's active braking. And there actually is a fifth mode you're not supposed to use. The fifth mode is I turn on one and two, in which case they just short a power to ground. That's how you get smoke. You're not supposed to do that. So really, you just have four modes of operation that count. Now to illustrate those uh, modes of operation, here I've got a half H bridge on my circuit. What a half H bridge is, is just T1 and T2. This part's disconnected. That's half an H bridge. And to give you an idea of what's happening, I'm actually going to take two 1K resistors, which goes this way, two 1K resistors going between 5 volts and ground. What that does is, if you think 7 and equivalent, uh, 1K, 1K, the 7 and voltage is 2.5 volts. So it looks like we've got 2.5 volts right here. The Thevenin resistance is 1K in parallel with 1K. It gives you 500 ohms. So there's my circuit equivalent that I'm doing. What that kind of shows is that when both transistors are turned off, I should get 2.5 volts. And that's this case right here. I take A tied to 10 volts, B tied to ground, and the voltage I see right here is 2.5 volts, 2.483. Both transistors are turned off. Now if I take A and pull it to ground, I get current flow through this transistor. T1 turns on. When that turns on, I should get 10 volts out. So if I do that, 
connect this pin to ground. Come on, puppy dog. There it goes. I actually only have a 5-volt supply. These are 5 volts. I should get 5 volts out. Um, it's actually 4.33 volts. I'm losing 0.7 volts because this is a Darlington pair. Darlington pairs lose 0.9 volts-ish. But anyway, it's pulled high. Okay, so let's turn off T1 again, tie A high to 5 volts, turn on B. If I make B 5 volts, like so, B is turned on. When this is turned on, I'm getting 0.2 volts. T2 is saturated. And if I turn everybody off, so T2 is off, T1 is off, I'm back at 5, 2.5 volts, half of 5 volts. So that's kind of how each half of an H-bridge works. I can turn on T1 or turn on T2 or turn, turn them both off. That allows you to get the left side voltage at plus 5, floating, or minus, or 0. Do it on the right side and get current flowing left, flowing right, or no current. To analyze an H-bridge, uh, let's assume I'm using TIP transistors. What a TIP transistor has, this is actually a Darlington pair. I've got two diodes, or two transistors in the package. The two diodes gives you a 1.4 volt drop based to emitter. And when I saturate it, I get 0.9 volts. So, assuming TIP transistors, if I have this configuration, left side is 0 volts, right side is 10 volts, this transistor is off because they have 0 volts at the base, 0 volts at the emitter, no current flow across that diode, meaning that guy's off. Transistor 3 is off. There's no voltage across its diode, so this one's turned off. Here, I've got voltage across the diode on T1. This one turns on, and this one turns on. To figure out the state, I need to find the current. I've got 10 minus 1.4, 8.6 volts across 5K, 1.7 milliamps. Beta is 1,000, so that allows 1.7 amps to flow. On transistor 4, I've got 10 minus 1.4 over 6K, 1.4 milliamps. Times beta, that allows 1.4 amps to flow. And the 8 ohm resistor. The most the current can be is 10 minus 0.9, when this one saturates, minus another 0.9. 8.2 volts across 8 ohms is 1.02 amps. Those three numbers. The smallest of those three wins. If the smallest of the three is right here, this sets the current, and beta IB is more than IC, T1 saturates. Beta IB is more than IC, T4 saturates. And that's what you want. I want the transistor to be saturated or off. And my voltmeter to be off so I don't lose the battery. And that's the ideal situation. The resulting currents and voltages then is I have 1.025 amps flowing. The voltage over here is 10 minus 0.9, 9.1 volts, and the voltage on the right is 0.9, because that's the saturation voltage for a Darlington pair. Now, if I build that in Circuit Lab, I can use the Darlington pair transistor or two transistors, build my own Darlington pair. Apply 10 volts in. When the left side is ground, right side is 10 volts. Then this turns off, ground. These two turn off. This should turn on, which gives you the 10 minus 0.9. Circuit Lab gives me 8.4 volts right here. And on the right side, I get 1.3 volts. And that's at the base. Um, this is 9.2 volts. This is 0.86 volts. Again, I assume 0.9 is close. 9.1, close. And the base voltage should be 1.4. There's your 1.4 volts. And 10 minus 1.4 ish. 
In this case, I've got the voltage across here of 8.4 volts. So 10 volts in gave me plus 8.4 volts out. I lost a little bit of voltage across the two transistors. That's making it go forward. Now instead, well, and I can get minus 8.4 volts, just flip these. Make this 10 volts, make that 0 volts, and now current flows this way, I get minus 8.4 volts. That's how I'm getting plus minus voltage out of the 10 volt source, and that's what we saw over here. I'm actually using a 5 volt battery, just a USB battery, to power it. I'm losing about 2 volts across the two transistors in my H bridge. Here's my H bridge. It's the H bridge we use in embedded systems. Two H bridges on a chip. Uh, here's one H bridge. Here's the second one. I'm only using one of the H bridges. Um, I can go minus 3.2 volts, plus 3.2 volts. Again, the voltage drop is the drop across the two transistors, base to emitter. Apparently, these are Darlington pairs in this package. And I can turn off the transistors, 0 volts. Now, if you use just a single transistor instead of a Darlington pair, like a ZTEX transistor would be just a single transistor with a gain to 1,000, I get similar answers, but now I only have a 0.7 volt drop across that diode. 0.7 volt drop across this diode, and now when it saturates, it's about 0.2 volts. So this should be 9.8 volts and 0.2, and that's kind of what you see. And Circuit Lab changed those to single transistors, meaning I'm using like a ZTEX transistor, and I'm getting 9.8 volts, 0.2 volts ish, and 0.7 volts across the diodes. Now, the voltage across my load, like my motor, is 9.5 volts. You have the 10, minus 0.2, minus 0.2. And again, if I switch them, make that minus 10 volts, correction, make this 10 volts, make that 0 volts, everything just gets, gets flipped, I now get minus 9.5 volts. And that's what we saw in the example, I can get plus minus voltage out of a single power supply. which is kind of what this is showing. Again, everything just is the mirror image. Everything we did before still applies, but now three and two are on and current goes backwards. What that looks like now, if I measure the voltage with the same polarity, it now looks like a negative eight volts across that resistor. And again, I can check that in circuit lab. V12 is now negative eight volts. A plus 10 volt supply is giving me negative voltage across my load. Now note, the way I'm getting negative voltage is this is either, well, ideally, uh, 10 volts going to zero, or zero volts going to 10. The voltage doesn't actually go to zero or go negative. The voltage is always between zero and 10. That's my power supply. But relative to the motor, I can have current flowing to the right with 10 volts, current flowing to the left with 10 volts, or negative volts, V12. Um, so again, that just kind of means that I can't take this point and ground it. It's not actually grounded. It's either 0 or 10, 10 or 0. But relative to the two sides of the motor, it looks like, like a negative voltage. There's a third mode of operation, active braking. If I turn on T2 and turn on T4, what happens is it's like taking the motor and shorting the leads together. The motor acts as a generator converts the kinetic energy into electrical energy, gets burnt up as heat, and you can do that with a motor. If you take a motor, kind of like this puppy, if you take the motor disconnected, I can spin it freely. If I take the two leads, my alligator clips, short one lead to the other, it now is really sluggish. Feels like I'm spinning through molasses. What's happening is the motor is behaving like a generator. It's creating electrical energy that gets burnt up as heat in the windings. That's active braking. 
That's the third mode. And the fourth mode is turn everybody off. To turn off the PNP transistors, apply 10 volts at the base so there's no current flow. To turn off the NPN transistors, apply 0 volts at the base so there's no current flow. This is when the motor spins freely. Now, you can do things wrong with an H-bridge. For example, if I have this circuit, it's not working the way I really want. I want these transistors to be saturated or off. What's really happening is they have a current limit. I've got three different currents. The current set by transistor 1, the current set by transistor 4, and the current set by the load. Whichever one's smallest wins. The current set by T1 in this case is 10 minus 1.4 over 5K. 1.7 milliamps times beta. This one allows 1.7 amps to flow. This transistor is 10 minus 1.4 over 10K. 860 microamps times beta. 860 milliamps can flow. And the atom resistor is 10 minus 0.9 minus 0.9 over 8 ohms is 1.02 amps. The smallest of these three wins, and that's right here. So this guy's the winner. What that means is transistor 4 is limiting the current. This is the in the active mode. To find the voltages then, I don't know what V2 is. It's somewhere between 0.9 and 9.1 volts. Where? I don't really know. I can back into it. I know that this one's saturated. Beta IB is more than IC. Saturated, this is 0.9 volt drop. The voltage is 9.1. I know the voltage across the resistor. The current is 860 milliamps times 8 ohms. I know this voltage. 9.1 minus that voltage gives you V2. So V2 does have a value, but to find it, I've got to back into it. It's, you know, wherever it winds up. And transistor 4 is active. This is bigger than 0.9, less than 10. It's in the active region. So this guy's going to get hot. That's bad. What's wrong is I don't have enough base current. To get this to saturate, I need to increase IB, meaning make the resistor smaller. I misspelled K, 5K. Make them both 5K, I get double the current. Double the current allows double the current in the collector. Um, so when you design your H-bridge, calculate how much current you need. Make sure that the transistors are saturated. Pick RB so that beta IB is more than IC. And in this case, if I need a base current of at least 1 milliamp, pick something bigger than 1, like 2 milliamps. Make these 4K, and I can actually make these 1K resistors. Uh, slight overkill, but then beta IB is really bigger than IC. It really does saturate. And there's no reason to make them different. Once you find one, make them all the same. So here's the handout. Find the voltages and currents in this H-bridge. And we'll let you pause the video, and then we'll go over it. Okay, so going over it, I've got 0 volts, 10 volts, this one's on. 0 volts, 0 volts, this one's off, ignore it. 10 volts, 10 volts, this one's off, ignore it. 10 volts ground, this one's on. The current then is 10, this is a single diode, 10 minus 0.7 is 9.3 volts. Finding the current then, my calculator working, I've got 9.3 volts divided by 10K. Ninety-three microamps. If beta is a hundred, that's allowing nine point three milliamps. So this one allows nine point three milliamps. Uh, the transistor over here. I've got 10 volts minus 0.7 across the diode 
divided by 2,000 gives you 4.6 milliamps times 100. That allows 465 milliamps. And then this resistor, uh, most I can get is 10 minus 0.2, minus 0.2, 9.6 volts at 50 ohms. That resistor limits the current to 192 milliamps. The current is the smallest of these three. That seems awfully, awfully different. Try the first one again. 9.3 divided by 10K times 100, 93 milliamps. So the winner's right here. That means this one's in the active region. This one's saturated. Saturated, I know that V5 is 0.2 volts. Active, I know that this voltage is somewhere between 0 and 10, where I don't know. I can find that. I've got 93 milliamps flowing. All that is 93 milliamps. 93 milliamps times 50 ohms is 4.6 volts, plus 0.2. 4.8 volts. So V4 is 4.8 volts. That's actually bad. This one's in the active region. To make it saturated, I want to have beta IB more than 192. So 2K worked. What I would do is change these to 2K. In that case, this allows 465 milliamps. This allows 465 milliamps. That limits only 192 milliamps. Now this one wins. Now the current will be 192 milliamps. This is saturated 9.8 volts. This is saturated 0.2 volts. Now H bridges are kind of useful. So likewise, you can buy them from DigiKey. There's a couple versions. There's the 5205. That's an eight half H bridge. And inside, you can see your H bridge right here. It's actually made out of MOSFETs. I've got two binary inputs. These are zero or five volts. And the output can be anything up to, I think, 36 volts DC. This is a little bit different than what we were doing. On these circuits, if they have 10 volts in, this has got to be 10 volts. 5 volts doesn't work. At 5 volts, I don't turn it off. This has some internal circuitry, so 5 volts will work. So likewise, things like a PIC microcontroller, 555 timer, can turn on off this H-bridge. And the power supply over here can be anything between 5 and 36 volts. With this, I have four modes of operation. From the data sheets, if I make both of these are low, I get plus voltage out. If I make it low high, I get negative voltage out. High low, then I ground both outputs. That's active braking. High high, the motor's coasting. And the fifth mode, burn out the motor or burn out the H bridge. They don't give you that option. You know, not too surprising. Uh, disadvantage is this is a $7 chip, but pretty useful. Another one is for $2.98, you can get this on eBay. Actually, $1.99, I can get this on e eBay. This is a dual H bridge package. That's what I was showing you with the DC motor. I've got two H bridges. Here's the half that goes left. Here's the half that goes right. Here's your 5 volts in. Here's your uh, 5 to 17 volts in and ground. One H bridge goes here, one H bridge goes there. This is really for a stepper motor. A stepper motor needs two H bridges. Or if you only need one H bridge, here's one H bridge controlled by these two inputs, one H bridge controlled by those two. And if you connect it up, what you're getting is uh, when this is a one zero, I'm getting the plus voltage out. I actually got plus 3.2 volts. When it was minus plus, I got minus 3.2 volts. And zero, zero, zero volts out. Uh, plus would just mean five volts, ground, ground, five volts, ground, ground. So I'm getting the plus minus voltage out of a single five volt supply. And the way I'm doing that is again, the H bridge. 
this isn't actually negative three volts relative to ground. This is three volts, D is three volts above C, or three is three volts above D, giving you the plus minus three volts across the motor, makes the motor spin forward and backwards. And I'm losing 1.8 volts. The place I'm losing that is I have the H bridge in there. I've got these two sides. This is losing about 0.9 volts. That's losing about 0.9 volts, giving you 3.2 volts. And again, let's do a quick demo. If I can get this dang thing to stop. So this is what we started this lecture with. I can take a single 5 volt supply and give you plus voltage, make the motor spin one way, negative voltage, make it spin the other way. I can get both plus minus out. So in summary, a single transistor lets you turn on a single device, either on or off. That's what we did the previous lecture. If you splurge, use an H bridge, you've got more options. I can apply a plus voltage, negative voltage. I can short the two leads to ground. That's active braking for motors. I can leave it floating. That's coasting. And ideally, you want the transistor to be either saturated or off, never in the active region. In the active region, that's when they get hot. And it doesn't just apply to motors. If I do that with speakers, if you have a speaker, what we had before is with just a vo single voltage, the speaker can go forward and neutral. Now what I can do is I can go forward and reverse. Forward and reverse. That uses the full range of the speaker. Go plus minus. And I can also do other things. I can fake a sine wave. I can do go high, idle, low, idle, high. Get a sine wave out. So really the H bridges are really useful. And that's lecture number 13 for ECE 320.